Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this big 3D printer. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, here it is. It prints about 440 millimeters in diameter and about 950 millimeters tall. It uses a multi-feed system. You can see the four rolls on top. It goes to pallet three to uh, the buffer system I made and then goes to the extruder. The outside shell is a rhino liner. It's what they use for like truck beds. It's made out of MDF. I got some nice handles on the side. You can see at the bottom there, so I can move it around. It's actually on sliders on a carpet. So it still weighs a good amount, probably around 300 pounds or more. You can see in the front here, I have a couple of buttons. I use this as a e-stop for a start and stop. It's also easy for somebody to just come up and turn it off in case of an emergency. It just cuts off the power to everything. Uh, below it, I have some meter gauges. Pretty much tells me how much power is coming in and how much I'm using. Got some more gauges below, which are the temperatures. Uh, have different probes on the water loops and different places in the enclosure so I can monitor it pretty well. All right, so below the buttons, I have some lights hooked up to the relays. So every time uh, the bed or hot end or chamber heater is engaged, the light will turn on so I can tell from a distance if something is turning on or off or not even working at all. Um, below that are the flow meters for the water loop. The left one is for the hot end and the right one is for the motors. And then you can see the reservoir right there. All right, so I'm gonna take the door off and I'm gonna show you the skeleton just remove the screws and before I remove the front panel, just wanted to talk about the door. It's got some latches on the top and the bottom to help with the seal. There is like a rubber seal behind here. And then I did use two sheets of glass that I made. So it's like a double pane to help with uh, the heat transfer from the inside of the 3D printer to the, the outside room. All right, let's uh, remove this panel. All right, the panel is off. You can see right there. And inside a 3D printer. So I'm going to actually remove this print. It's just like a vase. I got two cameras in here so I can monitor it when I'm gone. Uh, one at the top there. And then actually another one in the bottom corner on the bed. So I also have an Alexa on the side. So anytime I'm like away from home and I see it's making spaghetti or something happens, I can always just turn it off uh, remotely. So on the side here, this is actually uh, just a DIY radiator. I used uh, copper piping and then wrapped aluminum foil all around the copper piping. And then I have a, a heater strip, I think two of them, wrapped around the copper piping. Got a fan at the bottom there to try to help uh, move some air around, build up some heat in the chamber. All right, you can see uh, the water cooling loop on the motor there. It's going through all three of them. It comes in, in and out right there on the side. So I do have some quick disconnects for the water loop. Uh, I got some bells, I turn it off and I can disconnect this whole uh, water loop because the cooling blocks are connected to the motors, they're actually glued on. So when I disconnect the water loop, I can also take my whole frame out. I have to unscrew this angle iron from the build chamber to the frame it's on each side and then it's all the way up on top too uh it's kind of hard to see it's right there but it's kind of hard to get inside the chamber and show you guys so with the frame actually screw down to the outer shell of the enclosure i actually get a lot more stability with the frame not moving back and forth because otherwise if i didn't do that this thing would be wobbling around. All the wires in here are actually um, silicone. They're high temperature silicone wires in case 
anything overheats. I don't have to worry about the wires melting together and it's just a nice little safety feature to have. So the bed material is actually a sheet of pent bite, a sheet of aluminum, and then I have a, a heater sandwiched in between that and uh, the same material I use on the closure here on the, the back wall. It's uh, I think like a welder's blanket. I like to use that just to help prevent any fires. Uh, it can actually hold a flame for a little bit, but eventually I'm pretty sure it will melt and go on fire. All right, going on to the hot end area, you can see the orbiter two, going to a smart effector, going to my custom water block, going to the volcano, and then I'm gonna plan on putting some high flow nozzles in there just to try to speed up the print time. So the mag balls are pretty common. They are 10 millimeter protruded rods with the Delrin end caps. So you can actually follow the Bowden tube. It actually goes up to the top enclosure. I have a filament sensor right there, but I just never hooked it up. And on top of that, it comes out and it's going to the buffer system, which I actually plan on making a video about. Should release it pretty soon. Going to a pallet three and then to the, the four rolls of filament. Right corner, you see that duct right there. That is for my recirculation system. I was using it. The idea was to have the air come in on the side here. It's gonna get sucked through. And I had a HEPA filter and then a heat exchanger going down through a duct and just recirculating. The plan was to suck the hot air coming at the top, the hot air rising at the top of the build chamber, suck it through, clean it up, get it a hot constant temperature and introduce it back into the, the printer area. All right guys, so I'm actually going to turn this printer a little bit to the side and take off the side panel there and show you the electronics. All right, I took that panel off on the side and here is the electronics. The top part is actually where I was talking about with the, the filter, the HEPA filter, heat exchanger, and recirc tube was duct going all the way down and back into the build chamber. All right, I have fans sucking fresh air into this whole area with the panel on. It gets, the air gets forced down here through this hole and to the other section where the duet three is back down here with another fan helping it and out it comes actually out the front where the reservoir is so behind the fans i have two power supplies a 12 volt and a 24 volt they go to fuse blocks and then down to the relays i also have some terminals over here for 12 volt 24 120, uh, there's 120, hot and neutral. You can see the beard air right there, hiding in a corner. All right, moving down to where the Duet 3 is. I have a fan actually cooling down everything on the fan. And then on the actual board, I actually put some heat sinks on the, the Moffitts to help cool when they're working pretty hard. You actually see the relays, more relays on the top right there. Those are for the LED lights. All right, moving on down, we have the water system or the water cooling loop. We have the reservoir, it goes from the reservoir to the pump, from the pump to a heat exchanger, then to the radiator from the radiator, then it goes to like a little T block right there. And that splits it up to the each flow meter off to the side. And from the flow meters, then it goes to the hot end motors, then back to the reservoir. So this heat exchanger right here in front of you, I was trying to do a geothermal ground loop to cool off the heat coming from the 3D printer before it goes to the radiator but I just did not get enough cooling performance from it at all. I really need just to make a bigger ground loop 
and start all over again. Uh, that's for another project though. All right guys, I'm gonna end this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.